Yeah, hi all, it's uh, Rob Berridge here from uh, heatengineer.com. Um, I want to do a, um, a short video on uh, on how to use what I think, I mean we got the feedback from you guys and you helped us build this, but um, of how to use our new radiator calculator tool. Um, it's, a, it's a really, really helpful tool for doing all sorts of low temp system designs for whatever size of radiator that you want. There's a couple of caveats that we need to go through, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to kind of make this as clear as possible. And obviously any feedback, just, uh, just let us know what feedback you want to give us. This is a completely demonstrate or, or a, a demo heat loss uh, on a building. Uh, we were messing around with loads of different figures to try and see if we could you know, cause some problems. And you can see we've got a very, very high uh, heat loss on this. This, is, wouldn't, this wouldn't be typical on this particular basement. Is, that's where the biggest cause of the problem is. As you can see, it, it's 9.6 kilowatts of requirement that, it's, you know, that, is, that is needed. Um, but what I want to do is just, is just play around with this and just see where we go. So when you get to optional pages, you can go to your heat source. Once, you, once you're done, select your heat source type and model to proceed. And once you get that, you can see we've chosen here a Viesman, uh, and I think it's a V200. We just let the uh, let the system pop up. Yeah, so it's a 200 uh, system that we've done here, and we're choosing a 55 degree flow temperature. Now you can change this to whatever you want. Okay, um, and once you've got that flow temperature in there, so we're doing this to try and comply with new Part L uh, building regulations, and uh, go from there. So we've now chosen that. We go to optional pages now. You can see we've got this line here saying new radiators. So you click on the new radiators, and this is where this gets interesting. This is some of the feedback that we had from you guys. Now, you can see that our max flow temperature has been set in there at 55 degrees, and there's nothing that we can do about that. Now, this is, this is where it gets good. You can now click on this line here, and you can have a delta T, so a difference between your flow and return temperature of anything that you want between two degrees and 20 degrees. I don't think there's anything else out there at the moment that can offer this uh, kind of bespoke um, uh, 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 delta T chart for you. But the other thing that we've done for you, now this is something that I just want to just kind of talk about uh, before we kind of move on. If I just zoom into that, you can see that this section here, this disclaimer. Now, what do we mean by a DT50? DT50 is the standard radiator charts that you will get from merchants, etc., etc., um, that all have to comply with this figure here. So with EN442. Now EN442 is the industry standard of where radiators are tested to, but they are all tested from the benchmark point of DT50. Now what does DT50 mean? It means that it was tested at a 75 degree flow temperature, a 65 degree return temperature, which gives you a mean water temperature, so 75, 65, halfway between the two is 70, and then a 20 degree room temperature, which would say you take the 20 away from the 70, which will give you 50. So that's where you get the DT50. Now we don't really work to DT50 anymore with low temperature systems. We tend to work a little bit more towards DT30. Now it's very unlikely that your man at your your merchant will have a DT30 radiator chart behind the trade counter. You might find them there. Uh, if not, you don't really need them from this as long as you're using our software or something that is is uh, is, is similar to this. So if we said for argument's sake that we wanted to get a, uh, a DT of 10 on this particular project, we calculate that out and you can see that what that's done 55 degrees there, the temperature difference of 10 will make it 45. So that would give you a defined mean water temperature of 50 degrees. Now, the problem is with, with um, all of this, uh, these calculations there is that you need correction factors that are built in. Now this is built into the SIBSI guide and I'll just pull up a little shot here that I, I pulled up from the SIBSI guide um, on mean water to air temperature differential factor. This is the F1 factor that you have in there. Now if we were working at a DT30 for argument's sake, mean water to air temperature difference, a DT30, you'd have to have a correction factor of zero, because you can see 30 degrees there and zero there, we'd have to have a correction factor of 0 0.515, or 51.5% of the output. And you can see that we got it thing from here. So at 34 degrees, so it's 30, and then four, 
you'd have a correction factor of, of, of 0 0.606, which is 60.6% of the output of the manufacturer's stated value within this situation. Now, this is where Heat Engineer has really kind of excelled in this, and, I, and I'm, I'm sorry to blow this up, but I think this is such a good thing because I've been looking for this for a long, long time. And again, we couldn't have had it with, you know, without, without you guys' help. We are now putting in all the correction factors for you. And the correction factors are based on your temperature difference. So you don't have to work any of this out anymore. So you could have a, have a, a, a delta T of five, and you can see that the correction factor would change. Oh, sorry, I've got to calculate. And you see that the correction factor would change. So 54.8% of that. So if I just do, let's, let's, let's say we're going, to, we're going to do a low temp, um, I don't know, heat pump system. And we'll keep it, maybe let's keep it at, say, 7. So we'll calculate a 7 degree um, temperature, which would, uh, which would give us a mean water temperature of 51.5 degrees um, uh, centigrade mean water temperature within inside the radiator. Now this is the column that you've got. Now I'm not going to try and do this one here because we would be there all day just adding radiators. So let's just find a something that's a little bit more typical of what we would be trying to do. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at this. So if we just delete these these two rads off of here first of all, and we've got to try and find radiators that are going to fit in this study to give us 2.238 kilowatts. And you can see there's your output there that is required. So 2.238 kilowatts at our outside design temperature of minus 1.8, which, which you, I'm sure those eagle-eyed ones of you would have seen right at the beginning. All you need to do to start this ball rolling is you click on that first cell. And we're going to go for low temp rad. So we can try K2s, but let's see, let's see where we go. So we go for a click on a K2 radiator. That's populated there. We can see that our correction factor has already been put in for us, which is superb. So we don't have to think about any of that. So we've just chosen the radiator thing. We're going aesthetically again. So let's just say, well, let's just say a standard 600 mil high radiator. Let's click in the length and let's put in, I don't know, uh, a 1500 length K2. And you can see that at 70 degree mean water temperature, it will give you 2.6 kilowatts. But at our defined mean water temperature with our correction factor, we're only getting 1.388 kilowatts out of that. We need 2.238. So what we could probably do is we could say to the client, well, we might be able to actually get to 1200 size radiators in there to get it half and half. So if we have a look at that and we change that to 1200. Let's see what happens with the output. Right, so we now get pretty much 1100 uh, sorry 1.1 1 .1. so if, if we if we change that we're actually just underneath what we would want so we could say to the client that that's a good enough reason there to actually just say okay let's have another k2 keep them all looking the same another 600 by 1200 Oops, sorry 1200 there k2 that's giving us it. Now you see it's showing that we're in red here. Um, if we, um, in order to make, in order to make that go green, we've got to find a, find an output that gets us a level at the same as that or slightly above. So, I mean, we could we could easily do it by changing those to a, to a seven hundred high. Yeah, seven hundred high. Grads. We're going to be we're going to be quite a bit over now, but you can see now that the whole cells have gone green. Now. I don't know of any radiator sizing tool that is as easy as this. And you can add up to six radiators per room. So we've made it really, really quite easy for you. Uh, but you know that you're going to get really, really accurate results at your flow temperature of 55 degrees with a DT of 7 within the uh, um, calculation. As I say, the maths don't lie. We don't make them up. It's all straight from the SIBSI guide that we've worked quite closely with on this on this. Uh, um, uh, scenario. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed the video and uh, leave us some comments if, uh, if, if you like. Many thanks.